okay? We're having fun now? <laughs> this is Pastor Bob. Good to see you today. I'm glad you've joined us, me and the podcasters. We're having a great time this weekend. You know, it isn't every day that we get together with all the podcasters. Chris comes in from Denver. Scott comes in from Mississippi. Of course, Christian's from Sweden. We got Craig from Illinois. We got Andreas from Illinois. We kind of come a little bit of a ways. And, of course, we have Jamie all the way from Nashville. He drove yeah, it was 10 minutes to get here. Mm. Oh, wow. Anyway, but it's great to have these guys here. And, you know, we don't just come together to, uh, to do this podcast. We come together to spend some good time. And it's been a good time. We, um, we had Koi. It's the name of a Chinese restaurant. We had Koi last night and you know, preparing our stomachs for today. And uh, the, it, this, this takes careful preparation. Part of it is Chinese food. Um, <laughs> yes. And then I had a special surprise. Um, these guys bought me a Christmas present. And, and they said, you know, the Christmas present is on its way. And I thought, well, that's pretty cool. And I couldn't imagine. And they said, you know, it, they haven't arrived yet. And I, you know, I'm thinking, what in the world could this be? And I thought, well, probably not a stripper, <laughs> you know, because these guys are Christians, supposedly. <laughs> and uh, I'm not sure why that's the only thing I could imagine was a stripper. <laughs> that's the scary part. That's the thing that came to my mind. <laughs> that's the scary part. <laughs> it's weird. But your mind went to strippers. That that's worries See, me a that's little. That's probably bit. it. I don't know. So anyway, yeah. in walks my tattoo artist, and I got a, a new tattoo, my little caricature, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit later, because um, there's a reason I got that. You know, not everybody tattoos themselves <laughs> on their arms. <laughs> You're so vain. I, I am so vain. <laughs> <laughs> Except for Andreas, yeah. as well. All the time. Yes, so... <laughs> But anyway, so we had a time of tattooing. And Scott, you got show me your tattoo. I did. Right? Yes, I got the sanctuary logo because it, it rocks. It rocks. So sanctuary, you have now joined the cult. I'm there. The sanctuary <laughs> cult. I'm yeah. neck deep. You know, once you get in, you can never leave. It's like Hotel That's California. Hotel that California. may be bad for you guys. I, I love it, but y'all may be. <laughs> <laughs> we may have a problem. You huh? may have a problem. Wish I would have known that. And, uh, well, you're in now. It's too late. Yeah. Too late. Gonna go totally. to hell. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've come together today to do a series of podcasts <clears throat> once again. And, you know, this has been a lot of fun because every one of us are very different. The thing that I enjoy about this group the most isn't that we have so much in common, but that we have so much diversity, honestly. And even with our diversity, 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 we uh, have a very strong bond. There's some things that we agree to disagree on. There's some things that we don't quite see eye to eye on. But we have a bond that is, uh, that's amazing. And I love that when it comes to discussion because it really helps us to find the core in everything. And I think we realize as we discuss things that it isn't that we have all the answers, it's that we have all the love to find the answers together. And, uh, and that we celebrate our diversity together. So as we continue this, and you've probably already seen this in their podcasts, they're all very different, and they're all kind of very unique in what they're talking about. But I hope you're going to enjoy our podcasting here today. And um, we're again, this is the, the first podcast of many. So <coughs> if you're watching right now, make sure you watch every week. Well, I'm going to take just a minute to go around our table, and uh, I want all these guys to introduce themselves again. You re remember most of these guys from the last time we did this. Craig, this is your first time sitting first around time. the table with us. It's Talk scary. about yourself for a minute. Talk about myself. Yeah. Uh, well, I've been involved with Sanctuary for um, how long now? Almost 30 years, maybe? Yeah. yeah. So I've known Bob forever. Um, I met him. And he still I, likes me. No, I didn't say that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think I met you in 1987 or 88. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. a great year. Because uh, yeah, because I've got You're paraphernalia from back then. So I it, think I was five at the time. 
Yeah, okay. yeah, they were very right. young, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so I've been involved off and on with Sanctuary for a long time. Went through a um, period of time where uh, my wife and I got involved in a lot of legalism. And um, um, currently am credentialed with the Assemblies of God. And have three kids and a uh, very pretty wife. And, um, and she's sitting right behind you. She there. is. Yeah. She's here today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, uh, and we're from Illinois, which is only about three hours from here. So, yeah, yeah. So it's not too bad. So, Craig, and your your podcast is called Free. You're basically talking about what it is to come out of uh, almost a cult mentality of you know a lot of legalism, a lot of a lot of religion, and to find freedom in Christ again. And that's that's a voyage that a lot of people are taking. Yeah, you know, I think it's a, it's, um, it is an important voyage. It's also, a, a, you know, it's kind of a hard voyage. I mean, some of the things that we've talked about, um, and some of the things that you guys have shared, as far as, you know, I've done two podcasts now, really, at the, at the time of, of what we're doing here. Yeah. And um, even though the, the, you know, the content has been from the heart, one of the struggles for me, if you guys have seen the podcast, is just to be really transparent and really open. And that comes from when you get involved in legalism, yeah. the first thing to go mm -hmm. is being transparent and open yeah. because totally. you, you cannot share if you have wounds or if you have pains or if you have doubts, you really, you, you, there comes a point where you have to stop expressing those things because they're seen as a weakness, weakness. in your relationship yeah, with totally. the Lord. So um, I was thinking about, you know, I listen to what you guys say. Plus my wife um, also gives me some insight and, and sometimes um, you know, it's it's hard to remove myself from presenter mode because mm. in legalism, that's what you do all of your life. You present, you know, this is who I am and this is my relationship. And yeah. so hopefully through the process of the podcast, um, as I continue to sort of break down and become more transparent, um, other people will begin to feel the freedom to do that as well. Craig, do you think Craig? that... Not only that you felt that way, but that, that, that people that are in um, in your congregation that have been through, that are going through the same kind of legalism, especially when you were in the church that had all the legalism, do you feel like that same um, legalism is part of their lives and they're afraid of being vulnerable as well? Yeah, not probably not as much so where we're at now, but certainly... Um, there are some that are still in that situation, and and then of course most of the majority of the people from uh, my and, and Gina's past, you know, are, are certainly involved in that. In fact, yeah. the more um, I think that we sort of come out and and um, express, you know, who we are, um, the more distance that creates with some of those people because mm. they're just not used to that kind of honesty. Um, you know, it, and the funny thing about that is, especially in those kinds of settings those legalistic settings, we use the same terms that everybody else uses, you know, we just want to be real and you know how we say that in the Christian world, but we, I have not found that to be true. Or we don't want, we're just really to, following the Bible. Yeah, yeah. People don't want to be real. They, they really just want more of like a cheerleader, you know? And, mm -hmm. and, um, so yeah, in, in those legalistic settings, expressing your pain, expressing your wounds, that is just you know, really all but forbidden. You know? Absolutely. You know, um, Scott, you do your podcast on something similar, but it's the close. pain of coming uh, yeah. from the the ultra religious, yeah, um, yeah, and not necessarily cultic or or as uh, the same kind of thing, but as a pastor being very hurt, it's 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 you're, true. You're probably identifying with the same thing. Nearly everything he says hits yeah. me, and and it and not only does it hit me, it brings it back. Hearing him when he when I've taught with him, I've taught with Craig a lot personally, you know, in our texting and stuff, and and uh, he will make a statement and it brings it, it makes it very real again. And uh, the, the other night I was sitting out by a campfire, talking to him in the dark, no one for miles, just in the dark next to a fire, and uh, he would send a text and it would just it would just come back. It, that's something that's that's very real. Very, it's very needed, and I still think, very painful. Yes, yes, yeah. very painful. I, I, I think there are going to be so many of you that are watching. I think there, there are so many people 
I don't think Craig even realizes yet just how needed this is yes. for him and for others. It's yeah. going to relate. It's going to. It's going to. It's going to go into the quick. It's going to. Um, it's going to hurt, but it's going to heal. And uh, from that brokenness, it's going to change. It's going mm. to change a lot of people. It's going to change you, Craig. You. I just don't think you even know yet how awesome it's going to be for you. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. To be a part of what's going on around this table right here. It's, it's going to be, it's going to be great. No doubts. Yeah. You know, and part of it is the legalism imposed by that organization, but isn't part of it maybe a bit of legalism that we impose on ourselves? Heck yes. As well. Mm -hmm. Heck yes. I mean, there's a, a strong tendency to want to conform. I mean, you don't want to be the guy with the problem. Everyone wants to present as perfect. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. we just do, you know. Let's be honest with each other. When someone is struggling, the first thing we think of, uh oh, they must be in sin. Mm -hmm. There must be something going on. It's exactly what the apostles said, right? I mean, it's just human nature. And we've got this idea that to be a Christian, then your life must be happy and everything must be perfect. And if it's not, then it's probably your fault. And we want to have all the answers. We want to know. We want to know if, if you come to me with a problem, I want to be able to say, I know just how you feel. <laughs> and no, he doesn't. And I don't know it's, how you It doesn't feel. work that way. It doesn't. It just doesn't. It doesn't. It really doesn't. So, walking through this is, a, it's, it's, it's a road with landmines, isn't it? Because you kind of feel wounded. You feel like you're not sure where to walk. You, you feel like something's going to blow up again. I mean, I remember feeling wounded. I, I, been wounded several times for ministry, and sometimes things do blow up. And sometimes they do. I blow mean, sometimes up. that that is that's reality. You're not yeah. you're not feeling that way for no reason. Yeah. And plus, it's not just you. You know, Craig, you were just saying you you got three kids, a wife and three kids. You've got two kids mm -hmm. and a wife. You bring all of them through it. You did a podcast, Scott, with your daughter. Mm -hmm. Uh, which was excellent. Oh, by yeah, way. Yes, yes, thank you. Maggie, she's, she's, she's pretty Maggie's incredible. Great. She's 19 mm -hmm. and still carries the scars from what happened to you because it really happened to the whole family. Right. She does. She um she feels <clears throat> she feels very differently than most 19 year olds feel about religion and church and Christ and yeah. and um, church people. You know. Yeah, uh, it's been a it's been a, a long journey for her. For her sister, her sister was younger, but she's of course been in our family, and she's she's walked through it with us too. But but Maggie at the time was 11, 12 years old, you know, and she saw she would come to me and tell me things that were going on that I didn't see, and uh, of course I'm trying to be the one with all the answers, you know, it's going to be okay, it's going to be all right, you know, and try to uh, make make light of how she felt and how she thought and many times she was right mm. she saw things and um she she mentioned that in the podcast yes so biggest regret right yeah for okay. you as yeah. a man biggest regret in the whole situation for me and uh, like i said I, I cannot ever look at you or any of you around this table and say i know exactly how you feel but are, are you watching but biggest regret for the whole thing for me is that I I went I felt like when it was when I came out of the, the church life the church work I felt like I had wasted twenty years of my life mm -hmm. I felt like it was wasted time I felt like it was you know I looked I'm I'm standing there looking in the mirror as I'm going to work in a hardware store saying who are you and what are you doing what have you done your whole life to support your wife to to support this family to be a dad to be a husband and um, and I still battle with that yeah. I really that does not that does not go away now being a part of this has brought it full circle and I know that I wouldn't have been able to be who I am and where I'm at doing what I do mm -hmm. had I not gone through that I wouldn't be here today and, and I'm thankful for that but I still I still battle with that. I think there's a, a deception though a little bit I know for me the things that you do because you believe that you are, you know, sacrificing for the kingdom of God. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then you, at, when you come through it or, or you get a, another level of clarity, you think, I wish, and I don't want to be crude or anything, but I, there are, I think there are some of the regrets, regrets that I have is I wish that I would have told people off more 
especially when they were offending my wife and my kids. But you think, well, she's going to put up with this for the kingdom of God. Should have been more protective. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's the biggest, wow. definitely the biggest regret for me. Mm -hmm. the, I think that that's right now the current pain that I have. You know, my daughter is, um, you know, like any other uh, uh, kid, and uh, she likes the boy bands, you know, that are silly and, and whatever, and, and uh, Gina and I have like gone... Cherry no, they're not. Oh, <laughs> hey, no, easy. Yeah. Yeah. She dig that up. And, uh, and <laughs> even though she's been raised correctly with you and Gina both liking heavy metal. Yeah, <laughs> she still likes the boy bands. Oh, oh, that's that's I know. Right. That was a terrible struggle. Pray for us, man. Right there. Right there. But Gina and I have taken... Uh, well, we, we took her here to see... Um, um, what, what's the name of that? Is it One Direction? Just One Direction. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so yeah I know. We, that's the biggest one. Yeah, so we brought her here. We took her to Indianapolis uh, to do that as well. But one day she wore a One Direction t-shirt to uh, church, and a lady said, well, I, I can't believe a pastor's... To her, not to me. To her, I can't believe a pastor's kid uh, would wear a shirt like that. Oh. And again, man, you just... Oh. You, you take it on the chin, and you think, "Well, you know, just take one for the take one for the Lord's team." Yeah, but when now in you reality, wish you choke that lady. Now you're just <laughs> more. Yeah, well, I'm not going to go there. Totally, but, yeah. <laughs> At least not on tape. <laughs> right, we'll talk later. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. And her but name know. is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's funny because that that same individual, the first time my mother visited our church, um, as I'm going up to the platform to. You know, to begin service, my mother comes up and says, "Hey, I want you to know I'm here." You know, and I'm like, "Oh, thanks for being here, mom." And she said, "Yeah, you know." She said, uh, "This family over here asked me to move because they told me I was sitting in their oh, seats." You know, goodness. <laughs> they didn't realize it was my mother until I introduced her. You know, and yeah, so that's the kind of stuff wow. that happens. You know, oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a little cold. Yeah. <laughs> And you definitely got stories like that. The, well, the very that. first podcast that I did about this subject, you know, yeah. uh, about what I went through, the very first commenter under there said, get over yourself. Really? Yeah. I've had a few of those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, Jamie, you really do need to get over yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. sorry I have to break it to you. But, you know. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to get it. Yeah, see? See? Well... The vulnerability, I think, that we have in the ministry, sometimes we feel that way, that we're just supposed to take one for the Lord, you know? And I, you know, I'm old now, and I look back at my life, and I really ask this question, how many of these things that I've done for the kingdom of God, quote-unquote, has God actually asked me to do? Mm. And you yeah. know what? I think it's less than half. Really? Honestly. I look at so many things that I tried and failed with, and, I, and I'd and i say, Lord, how come you let this fail? And he said, I never asked you to do it in the beginning. And there have been a lot of successes, too, but, you know, not every good idea is a good idea from God. Mm. Um, and how many good ideas do you have every day, you know? Which ones do you act on? And it's not always easy to know. And I think of sometimes the pain that you go through, and you think, okay, like you said, no. i got to take this for God, and yet when people you love are being hurt by it, is God really asking me to do that? Self-inflicted wounds. Yeah. Or, should it, or, or are there just times when you just need to slap people? <laughs> you ever feel that way? You just want some comments You know comments when somebody now, says something uh, as a pastor, and you just want to say, could you just stand still for a minute while I uh, slap you? Did you really line, need to say up. that? Are you serious? <laughs> Craig, you were talking about getting real. Here yeah. we go. <laughs> <laughs> but you feel like that sometimes, you know? But but you just swallow your pride, you swallow the 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 regret and you know, and this is part of it. And you think, well, you know, this this family may be big tithers. You know, yeah. I'm sorry, but that's the case sometimes you think it's not in this sanctuary. Family, yeah, 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 well, that's not sanctuary. Not, I remember you never even took an offer. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, and I never knew what people were giving because I always had somebody else that did the offering, so I didn't have to know. But sometimes you have to know. Some pastors do. You have to at the Temples of God. Mm -hmm. That's the horrible thing because you think, okay, they're giving a lot of money to the church. What do I do now? They're keeping the doors open. That's a tough one. I understand that's a tough one. And we say, well, this is the moral road, this is the high road, but what about the realistic road, keeping the doors open? 
I just think there's a lot of things that we do that we really regret later and say, okay, but did God really ask me to do this? And that's part of our regrets, especially filtering through what is and what isn't, you know, what, what things were his will and what things that I act on my own and how can I use those things for the future? And folks, some of you that are listening right now are going through that same thing. You know, you're asking yourself, I'm in the middle of the ministry. I'm hurting. My family's hurting. I, I hear what these guys are saying, and I feel the same way. Uh, some of you are involved in a church that kind of does that with each other, and maybe somebody's walked up to you and said, you know, you, you can't wear a heavy metal shirt in church like that, or or you can't have that kind of hair, or don't you know that you're listening to the wrong kind of music, or, you know, there's all kinds of things that people say that are very hurtful, and you've had that, that happen to you as well. That's what we want to keep talking about here, and I, I know we've been uh, a little bit raw. We're about to get more raw in the next one. You don't want to miss it. I'm scared. So, folks, thanks for joining us today. Stay tuned. Next week, we're going to go a little bit deeper, and we're going to talk about church. You know, is church a thing of the past? Is God still blessing this institution? Oh or is there another way, another road, something else maybe we ought to be doing and just forget this whole thing that we call organized church? It's going to be juicy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to go there. God bless you.